They're starting. What do you need? You want to say something? It's all right. You did. I'm just Go ahead. Josh says it's fine. I mean, he, won't, he won't bite your face off. I just want to say, first anniversary is tomorrow for Josh and Amy. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. What? what? I don't know. I'm just going to go for I don't know. I started hitting stuff. Are you there? Yeah. Search? Okay. Oh, that's on that little thing. That little glass. It didn't say it. There it is. Okay. All right. There we are. That's us. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Wow. Look at there. Yeah. Happy anniversary to Josh and Amy. That's so cool. Very good. Uh, Jamie Black and Taylor Lingus are watching us right now as we speak. Hi, guys. Hi, hi out there in TV land or Facebook land or whatever it's called. Hey, Amen. We're having church. We're having Facebook Live. We're having Mountain High Life. Hey, Amen. We're alive and we're here and we're blessed. And we know that everybody uh, hears the voice of God if they'll just listen. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're telling everybody during this whole deal is just hear the voice of God and do what he says. You'll be fine. Amen. Amen. You follow God, you're going to be okay. Right. Let God be true and every man a liar. You don't have to follow man. You don't have to follow any stuff. You just follow God and you're going to be fine. And that's, a, that's the instruction of the Lord. And I, I, I just truly, truly believe in that. <clears throat> I guess what we'll do now there's my friend Tony Jubon watching. Hi, Tony. Good to see you. Can't see you, but you can see me. But uh, what 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 a blessing it is to to be able to give into the kingdom of God. <clears throat> We're gonna uh, receive our offering right now, and you can do offering on the internet. Um, you, you can. Uh, there, there's Candace. She's watching. Hi, Candace. Yay. Look at him coming on. Beverly. Beverly Horner. Good to see you. Wow, what a deal. But um, just giving into the kingdom is so important and it's it's so so relevant to these times. Let me tell you what. When you, when you need something, you seed something. I learned that many years ago. When you need something, you seed something. Hey, man, it's not, it's not about something else. It's not about you uh, <clears throat> going out and uh, making something happen. That, that, that's not how it really works. It isn't. It's about seed time and harvest. And he said as long as the earth remains and the moon comes up in the evening and the sun comes up in the morning, come on now, seed time and harvest will remain. That's never changed. And I've learned that it's so powerful just to put a seed in the ground. It's so powerful to put a seed in the ground. I was just at a farm uh, where my son Tim lives over in the San Luis Valley. And I was looking at the rows and how perfect they are. And, and, uh, and it's like I couldn't drive a tractor that straight. You know, my Tim and I were talking. If we were driving the tractor, it'd be looking like this. You know, oh, oh, oh. but those rows are perfect. We're looking at this circle, and I think they were planted. They had barley planted there, maybe. Um, I I don't know, but um, it was just amazing to look at that. And then we were talking to the farmer, and we say, and we said, well, you know, what is it that gets that? So straight, he says GPS, <laughs> and I love that, you know. And to me, that means God, God's positioning system. Come on, man, let's let God position us. Hey, man, I know what GPS is, and it's an awesome thing. That's how they make those tractors go straight, it's awesome, it's really cool. I think that's great, it's great technology, and it's fun. It's a beautiful thing, but uh, we gotta we gotta do it God's stuff here, man. Let's you know you know the thing about God is you don't have to do anything. God is not forcing us. Amen. Aren't you glad? 
You know, if anybody came to church here this morning at Mountain High Live, hey man, if anybody came to Mountain High Live and Facebook Live, however, did anybody force you to come here? I hope not. God didn't even force you to come here. He might have gave you a little nudge. A mule and a, and a little pony. And uh, once in a while, our grandkids ride the little pony. And we just have the mule because Clifton gave it to us. But it's more than this big pet. But I'll watch that mule, and it takes care of that little pony. And what, what it'll do, it'll take uh, that mule, Smokey is his name, and he'll take his head, and he'll, he'll just nudge that little mule or that little pony. You know, he wants that little pony to go somewhere. He doesn't, he doesn't kick her, you know. He doesn't make her do it. He doesn't do anything. He just nudges her like that. That's what God does. He gives us a nudge, amen? And I believe this morning he's given us a nudge to give into the kingdom. Just giving us a little nudge. And, and that's how our God is. He didn't make you get saved. Did God make you get saved? You know, I was so far gone that I needed to get saved. Amen. <laughs> I was a bona fide mess and come to the end of myself and got saved. But God didn't make me. You know what he did? He received me because he loved me. Now, I'm going to ask you a technical question, Brian. Is this a massage collar you guys put on me here, or what is it? Because it vibrates, it's vibrating. It goes like you're getting a text or something on this. Uh huh. But it's never done that to me before. It's going and it, and it vibrates. It's a shock collar. It's a shock collar. Oh, you guys are shocking me from up there, Brian. Making sure I say it right. <laughs> it's my, it's your nudge. There you go. <laughs> but I don't know. Hey, maybe it's when people, new people come on here and sees them or something and it tells me. Is that what it is? Okay. All right. Kevin said that's what it is when all these new people come on here. Look at all these. There's Brad Hughes. Awesome. Good to see you, bud. Kayla. Kayla Brown. Good to see you, honey. What a deal. Darcy, man, look at these people coming on. It's awesome. But anyway, I'm trying to do the offering. But uh, in doing this offering, we, we, we just, just received that nudge. God, God wants you to plant into the kingdom for you. Amen. I, God did this for us. He didn't do it for himself. God doesn't need your money. I hope you understand that. I hope everybody understands that. God's not out here begging. God's not a beggar. Neither of you. Amen. God's people don't need to beg. Uh, amen. All we do is plant a seed. And just plant a seed into, 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 your, into your own life today. Plant a seed into your own life so that you can be a blessing to others. Amen. Somebody told me one day, and I'll never forget this. Uh, somebody said, and um, we were in a meeting, and it was one of the pastors that discipled me. And Left. I have just everything I need, and I don't need any more, and I don't want any more, and I don't want to do any more. You know, and my pastor looked at the, that little lady and said, Man, you know, so that means that you just care about yourself. All you have to do is care about what you have. He said, You're not going to prosper for you, you're going to prosper for everybody around you. Hey, Amen. We can help people. We were talking about, uh, uh, talking with Julia for our network conference uh, yesterday. She was wanting to get a thing. Our partners in uh, Africa and India and wherever to help them feed some of their people because they can, they don't they can't get out. The country's closed down. They have to get food somehow. And I know that our one of our orphanages is doing that. He has to buy it, um, buy his food. You know, just by somebody he knows because the markets are closed down. It's just amazing what it, what they're going through. But helping people. Why would you, you want to prosper to help people for pity's sake? What are we doing? Amen. It's not about you being comfortable. 
Oh man, I didn't get one internet. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, man. Man. Hallelujah. There's Leona Hawkins. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Rhonda. Oh, there's Rhonda. How you doing, Rhonda? Hope you and Kevin are doing great. But I just I just want you guys to think about that today as, as you give into this offering. And if you're gonna give uh, from home, those of you that are watching from home, this is really easy. You just go to uh, godshappy.com. Amen. So easy. Click on giving. Click on godshappy.com and go to a little uh, place there where it says Tithely. And you give right on there, man. You can give right in there right now. It's so easy. It's awesome. Also, guys, we're on YouTube. Uh, YouTube is not live yet, but uh, we are on YouTube, and those are edited. So you can't see all my my mistakes, amen, and all the mistakes. When, you know, people are walking by, and, you know, Josh is fixing my phone for me and all the stuff. And, but uh, they're on YouTube and also on Vimeo. Is that how you say it, Brian? Vimeo? Yeah. Vimeo. I haven't got to see that part yet. But uh, thank God for uh, Dale Rayleigh. He's putting all that up. Thank you, Dale. You're probably watching. And I uh, appreciate you doing that too, my friend, and uh, doing all the editing and helping us with all the stuff and helping us with the cameras and uh, that Kevin uh, – has brought and made work here. And you guys working together with Brian and Josh, man, it's been awesome. But anyway, we'll get back to this giving. And if you can, to just uh, give from your heart. Amen. I just pray right now in Jesus' name that all of us, including myself, give from our heart today. Lord, that we put seed in your ground. We put good seed in your ground and expect a mighty harvest for the kingdom so that we can love people, so that we can help people, so we can get this message of grace and peace to the entire world, Lord. We know there's going to be a mighty outpouring. We know there is. There's going to be a mighty outpouring. There's going to be a mighty awakening of the church, and I'm believing that it's starting right now. Everything we can do in that and be able to help everybody. So we put seed in the ground to watch this incredible end-time harvest. We believe it together in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. How awesome is God? How awesome is he? Isn't he something? He is. He is so awesome. We got a big God. Hallelujah. A huge, huge God, and he's the best God, and he's a loving God, and he cares about us, and he cares for us. Amen. That is so cool. It's just amazing to me to watch God um, a person that was just totally lost, totally messed up, and turn them into a, 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 a person that can actually help people, love people, care for people, minister to people. And I, I guarantee you, I'm one of those. <laughs> Amen. I am. I'm one of those that he changed. There has been a change in me. And he is rearranging me. Amen. And it's a beautiful thing. And I want to say about our world conference, we're having it. And we will be on, uh, uh, on this Facebook channel right now, Mountain High Chapel. Uh, our conference will start tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And then it'll be at 9 a.m. each morning, 9 to 1. And then it'll be at 7 p.m. each night. From We start tomorrow night, and we go all the way through Thursday night. So join us on Facebook, on YouTube. I don't know what all we're going to be on, Vimeo, all, all the stuff. But we're going to be out there, and it's going to be a good time. So come and, come and see. we got some incredible friends that are ministers of the gospel that are going to bring you a word in due season. We've got a powerful team, powerful team of people that are going to just uh, 
uh, bring this word and our 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 whole thing is just uh, restoring our vision. Amen. That's our theme for this thing, and it's a uh, the year is 2020, and it's like we have 2020 vision. You know, in Acts 2020, it says he taught them publicly from and from house to house. Come on now, that's what we're doing, mm-hmm. right? That's the vision. The vision, and we need to restore that vision. We need to make sure that vision is uh, 2020 at least. Mm-hmm. You know, I uh, I got uh, cataract. Uh, uh, surgery and they put these lenses in my eyes that give me uh, 15 20 farsight which is the doctor said that's about as good as you can get and I can see really good a long ways away but then I have to wear these silly little things to read but uh, but what a blessing that is to be able to see you know Jesus talked a lot about blindness and uh, there were some physical blindness that he healed and all the things that happened with him. But I'll tell you what, we need to be able to see. That's great. We need to be able to see what's going on around us, see what's going on, and we need to be able to see God to get through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. There has been a valley. And I think we've been walking through that thing. Amen. But it says, yay, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. We'll get through it, and we'll be saying yay all the way through. Are you with me? We bless you. I pray over everybody's seed. I pray over everybody's offering. In Jesus' name, it is blessed, and there'll be a mighty increase in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, I know it. I'm always saying hi to people on here and trying to do the offering and everything at the same time. Just bear with us. We're having fun. Amen. Can't have fun in the kingdom. There just isn't any fun. So that's what we do. Turn with me in your Bible to Genesis chapter 3. Amen. Father, I thank you for the anointing. I thank you that every one of us in the kingdom are anointed. Every believer is anointed and appointed to hear your word, to receive your word, to hear the spirit of the living God work in and through us. And we know today that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis 3 and verse 1, it's out, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden? He's asking him a question, isn't he? That talking snake. He's he's giving him some stuff here. And the woman said to the serpent, We made the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Oh, boy. What a a great suggestion. Hmm? So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. Whoa. Whoa, watch out now. And they knew that they were naked. But before, they just didn't. They weren't worried about it. Hey, man, you ever go out of your house naked? No, you don't, do you? You put clothes on. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Wow. 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 Talking about suggestion this morning. That's the name of it, suggestion. Just talking about suggestion. And we have so many suggestions out there today, don't we? You listen to all the suggestions. Well, you should do this. 
You should do this. You should do this. You should do this. All it was through this whole pandemic, through the whole thing, was suggestion. That's all it was. And people suggested, and they wanted you to do this, and they wanted you to do that, and they told you this, and they suggested that, and and what did you do with it? Wow. The servant made a suggestion to Eve that there was more to God than her and Adam had. That was the suggestion. Oh, there's a lot more. You don't you don't need to get this. There's so much more to that. Right? Ooh. Come on now. You don't need to know everything to have everything. That's a big statement. You don't need to know everything to have everything. Did you know that so many of us, I mean, Adam and Eve, were, think about it, they were in that garden, and they had everything with perfection. I mean perfection. There was nothing. You didn't need clothing. You didn't need to wear uh, shoes. There was no thorns. I mean, there was no. There was nothing that would hurt your feet. You're walking around naked. They didn't even care. It didn't even dawn on them that they were naked, because there wasn't any big deal to be naked. They had everything, and didn't know it. Hmm. Yeah, that might be a hmm moment. You might want to take a little hmm there. They had everything and didn't know it. And uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking that way in this situation that we've all been in here in the last couple of months. What do you have? Do you know what you have? Are you listening to the suggestion? Huh? Did anybody send you a letter from uh, uh, the government telling you that you had to shelter in place? Anybody, anybody get one of those? I know some of you in business might have. I saw a couple of those going around. Um, but most of us didn't. It was just a suggestion on the TV. That's where most people got it, or on the internet. Amen? Wow. What, what are you going to do with the suggestion? See, any suggestion you get, you need to come to a place where you 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 go to God, because they're 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 being fired at you like I've never seen before in my life. I've never seen so many suggestions coming about like like, like that are coming about now. I've never seen anything like it, and it's just like oh yeah, well this is what you do. Oh yeah, you you should do this. Oh okay, and then we like sheeple. We just do it. We do, we sheeple, we just do it, and we just follow them to the gas chamber. Watch out. I'm telling you, watch out. Beware of what you, what suggestions you listen to and put, uh, put your decision-making power to. Beware. Watch out. I, I'm telling you what, you, you need to look at what, what's being suggested to you today. I believe in that with my whole heart, and I'm not even a little bit ashamed to say it. Just don't listen to all this stuff. Come on. When this thing first started, man, I had it on and I was listening. And you know what? We just decided one day, that's enough. <laughs> I need to listen to God. Amen. I need to listen to the Holy Ghost. Well, and I do our little devotions in the morning. We pray and we say, hey, what's, what's going to happen today, God? Come on. We're going to go for it and do what he told us to do. And we can be happy. Come on. He doesn't want you just sitting around going, oh, God, look at this terrible world. Just read history. Let me tell you what. It's, it, this isn't new. It's just not new. It's just the old serpent. Amen. <laughs> it's the old serpent trying the same old tricks. 
Yeah. Isn't that amazing? The old serpent trying the same old tricks just to try to get us anything. He'll do anything to get us to eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Or to eat of some other tree there. that has us to the place where we are controlled by another. See, God doesn't want us to be controlled. If he did, he would control us. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. God does not control us. The only control God has over you is the control that you allow him to have over you. Amen. Amen. Amen? And you allow God to control your life. You allow the spirit of God to control your life. You allow the word of God to work in your life. You can, you can rise above anything. Amen? It doesn't matter. The, the valley of the shadow of death, that's as bad as it gets. Come on. What else is there? I mean, it's, you know, let me tell you what. We're blessed. You have everything. You don't have lack. See, it's what it says in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. Amen. You lack nothing. It doesn't matter what you think you have or what you don't have. You have everything. Your thinking is the only thing that keeps you away from anything. Wow. Yeah, that's not in the notes. <laughs> Your thinking keeps you away from having everything that you have. I mean, you have everything. That's why it's, you're, 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 you're in the garden. You have the garden of Jesus, which is way better than the garden of Eden. The garden of Jesus. You have that. You have everything that pertains to life and godliness. There's nothing else. You lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. You lack nothing. Amen? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Now, our circumstances have a little lack in them sometimes. Come on. It's true. That is real. And I believe that. I mean, come on. You have a circumstance and you don't have what it takes to do that, right? Anybody ever have that? Or you just all walking in perfection? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. We're walking in it. But I, I'm telling you, it's just that. It's nothing else. You have no lack. We have all the Jesus that we need. When he is in us, how could we need anything more? Every answer to life is in you. Every healing is in you. Every miracle is in you. Every sign, every wonder, every blessing is in you. That's what it means. Christ in you. The hope of glory. You're a victor. You're not a victim of the circumstance of the world. They shut down the world, but they didn't shut down Jesus. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Did I say something? They may have shut down the world, but they didn't shut down Jesus. Amen. Jesus is not of the world. Okay, neither are you. We're not of this world. We're just in it. Amen. We have Jesus, so we rise above the circumstance. We don't have to worry about all this stuff. We don't have to be consumed by it. Being consumed by the nonsense of the world just makes you goofy. Have you heard some of the goofiness? Wow, I've just heard some so much goofy things. And so many goofy things. A lady cussed me out in the in the Sam's Club the other day. I had my uh, my kerchief down here like this. Was down like that. I was in Sam's Club and I was texting. This lady goes, put on your mask. Wow. And it just came out of my mouth. It just said, I didn't think before I spoke. I says, you're not my boss. Yeah. And I smiled. It had to be the Holy Ghost because, you know, who knows what I, my flesh would have told me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that probably wouldn't have been good. But, but so I told her that, and then she told me a four-letter expletive. Off. 
And <laughs> that's what she said. And, and I went, okay, and she's about 80. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. I just started laughing. What are you going to do? And Mona, Mona was about from here to that wall. And she turns around to me. <laughs> But come on, well, where have we come? Where, where have we come? We need to love one another. We don't need to be ordering people around. Listen, if you want to wear a mask, please wear it. It's okay with me. I'm not going to tell you to wear a mask. I'm not wear a mask. But please don't tell me to wear a mask or not wear a mask. I'm not taking orders from you. <laughs> I'm really friendly, though. When I go into a store that my friends like up here, they ask, they ask you very, very politely, would you mind wearing a mask when you come into our store? Because we want to make sure that the government asked us that. And plus, we want to make sure our employees are okay and that you're okay. It bothers me not. That's all right. If you ask me, just don't tell me. Don't order people around. Amen. Don't order people around. Who are you? Hey, man, I'm not your boss, and you're not mine. I have one boss. His name's Jesus. And, I, you know, and let me tell you what. We were talking about this earlier, huh, Tim? We were talking about this earlier. Uh, you know, I bow to him. I bow to my king. I do. I bow to my king. Whatever my king says, I'm in. My king is Jesus, and I bow to him. But why don't bow to any man? None. No matter. Amen. Amen. I, I hope people get the intent of what I'm trying to say. I'm not against the people that are trying to trying to do all this stuff. I'm not against people, period. But I am against the devil. And the demonic realm is trying to control the world right now. Amen. And we have to say, no, in Jesus' name. And we rise above it, and we go on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus brought all God had and gave all of himself to us. Everything. That's what he did. Wow. So that you and I could have everything that's possible in the kingdom. He is more He's a more than enough God. He has so much more for you. So much more. He's a more than enough. He's not, he's not a barely make it God. He's not a get by God. Aren't you glad he's not a get by God? Have you ever got by? You know, you just get by. That's not fun. Oh, God. I'm so glad. You're praying the check in the mail, you know, and it comes. <laughs> That's just getting by. I don't want to be a get by guy. We don't have a get by God. We don't need to just get by. We need to flourish Amen. and be in health even as our souls do. Controllers like the serpent in Genesis suggest there's not enough. You don't have enough. Wow. You don't have enough toilet paper. None of that puts fear up here. You don't have enough. There's not enough beef. Let me tell you, I went to a local drive through restaurant just to get an iced ice tea one day. And I'm going through there. And I get up to the uh, little ordering stand there. And there's a sign on there. Dear customers, if you can, please order from our chicken menu because there's a beef shortage. Now, my son raises beef. And I saw Lukey out there in Como yesterday. I saw you out there on the fence, but I saw you on the on the east side of the road there. I honked and waved at you, and you just acted like you didn't know I was even there. But <laughs> you, you couldn't hit on uh, Let me tell you, there's a lot of cattle, and there's a lot of beef. And it, but there's a suggestion that there's a beef shortage. When I looked at our ribeye steaks that we usually give for our men's conference, I looked at them yesterday at uh, Sam's Club. There are 13 
95 a pound. When they went up to seven, I was very angry. Yeah. And I asked the guy, well, what's the deal? Tell me the deal. Beef shortage. It's not true. Now, there is a packing house problem. They're not being able to process the beef. Why don't they just tell you that? Why, 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 why did they lie to you? To you? Was that just easier? Packing house problem. No, not a beef shortage. There's no beef shortage. There's no beef shortage whatsoever. There's somebody cashing in. Come on. By what? Suggestion. Just a suggestion. Where did that come from? The talking snake. <laughs> it's just a suggestion. It's not true. There's more cattle out there than you can even imagine. Buffalo. We got cattle. We got buffalo. We got meat. We got hogs, man. They were killing hogs because they couldn't process them and wasting them. What? Pouring milk on the ground. Well, I saw a whole load of tomatoes in a dump truck go like this in the, in the dump. Coming out of Florida. Potatoes. What, are they, what, are they, what Any of it. Come on, because they can't process. Give me, give me help. And now they're going to charge you $13.95 for ribeye? Holy Jesus. Come on now. Suggestion. Come on. You know what? We don't need suggestion. We need the truth. Amen. We need the, the, the truth. We don't need somebody suggesting to us, oh, there's a beef shortage. Oh, oh no. Oh, there's a there's a everything shortage. <laughs> everything short. No, it isn't. We there is no lack in the kingdom of God. Amen. There is no lack. There isn't now, and there's never going to be any lack in the kingdom of God. I don't care what happens. There's no lack in the kingdom of God. Come on. He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills, man. And I mean, that's more hills than you can imagine. Wow, I was looking out there yesterday where you guys have them cows out there. There's a lot of cows out there, man. That's south of Fairplay down there. A lot of cows down there. They're everywhere. Wow, Lukey helps take care of those, man. Thank you. I mean, what a blessing. I mean, we have we have food. The kingdom of God has food. And guess what? We share. We don't suggest, well, maybe there's not enough. <laughs> That's demonic. See, you know when it's a suggestion like that and it brings fear, that it's demonic. You know, just right now. You got to oh I'm starting to walk around. I gotta stand in the camera. That's hard for me. <laughs> I hold on. That's why I hold on to this pulpit because I try to move too much. And it's on wheels. I could ride it, but I better. <laughs> Guys, we don't have to listen to the suggestions. We have to listen to the word. The word of God. Let God be true in every man of life. Have you ever heard that before? Come on. Now, when you don't believe you have all you need, you're in lack. You hear me? So you've got to believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to those that believe. That's what he said. I didn't say that. That's not my, my idea. God's idea. You don't have to see it to have it. You have it when you believe it. Come on now. That, that, this is basic stuff here. But I'm telling you what. It's what we need right now. Amen. We got to believe. We got to believe in the great awakening of the church and the revival that's going to hit. That's going to that, that's going to change it all. And I know there's some people that don't believe that's going to happen, but I do. I believe the word tells us there'll be a great awakening. I believe that with everything in me. I, everything. I mean, come on, let's be a part of that. Amen.
Lack is not so much physical lack. It's a heart issue. Yeah. That's what it is. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's so simple. Isn't that easy? Didn't you figure that out that God made it so easy that I couldn't even get it? <laughs> I got that. As a man thinking. And you know what? When I have stinking thinking, I see lack. It's not anybody else. I can't blame the government. I can't blame you. I can't blame Mona. I can't blame anybody. It's me. It's my stinking thinking. So I got to think on these things that are noble, these things that are true, these things that are lovely, these things that are good report. I got to think on God. I got to think on Jesus. I got to think and believe what we really have, who we really are in Him. If we always want more, it leads to using people. Hmm. It even leads to a nasty little four-letter word called need. It leads to need. Yeah. Let me tell you what needs nasty. Need is truly codependency. Yeah. Need is uh, some somebody giving too much, somebody taking too much. Mm -hmm. uh, codependency, basic. There's a lot to it, but I mean, there's that. And we don't need that. When we think we could become like God, it leads us to believe that we're not. Watch out. You got to think about that for a second. I'm going to say it again. When we think we could become like God, it leads us to believe that we're not. So that's what that's what the, the, the talking snake said. You could be like God. Wow. What are you talking about? You dip one? You already are like God. <laughs> it's okay for me to call the devil a dip one. Yep. I call him anything I want. Come on. He's lying to us again, man. It's just a stinking lie. You're like God. You're not, you're made in his image. Amen. We are like God, just like him. We're made in that perfection image, and it says that in Genesis 1.26. You can check it out. He said that he made us in their image. Come on now. Thinking about the Trinity, the Outer Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You're made in their image. We made them in our image. That's what it says. Check it out. Genesis 1.26. You check that out. That's God. You're like God already. You don't have to become like God. You don't have to eat in the tree of the suggestion from hell. <laughs> yeah. Don't eat in the tree of the suggestion from hell because that's what we have. That's what we have lingering out there right now, waiting it out for us. You need this. You need this. And you'll be okay. Will you be okay when they wave it out there like that and they say, we're going to put a chip in you? Will you be, will you be okay? No, you won't be okay. We'll stand. That's right. We stand against that. Don't, don't let them put a chip in you. Hello, I'm, I'm saying this to the world. Wherever Facebook Live goes, don't let them put a chip in you. Can I say it any plainer? Don't, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't take the suggestion. It's, it's for your safety. <laughs> Check it out. You ever read your history? That's what Adolf Hitler said. That's right. It's for your safety. No. Let me tell you what. Here's where safety comes from. It doesn't come from the government. It doesn't come from making laws and regulations. It comes from God. Amen. You are safe in his arms. You are safe in Jesus. Jesus made you safe. Amen. You walk in Jesus and you walk with him side by side with Jesus everywhere you go. I guarantee you, no matter what happens, you will be safe. Come on. I didn't say it all be perfect. I just said you'd be safe in him. Amen. And he'll get you through the valley so fast. It'll be awesome, man. Watch this. You watch this. I'm telling you right now. I see the revival. I see it right out that window. 
right now, I see people lined up out there, coming in, cars parked on both sides of the highway, a state trooper out there trying to keep the, the people from hitting each other, and people lined up to have four or five services a day right here at Mount High. That's going to happen. Because people are coming to Jesus. Amen. People are coming to Jesus, and they're coming now, and it's time. It's time right now for the revival to begin. Hallelujah, and it's time right now to end. Isn't that something? God did not withhold Jesus. How is it that we think he would withhold anything from us? Amen. Amen. You're safe, you're blessed, and you have everything that pertains to life and godliness. If God is for you, who can be against you? That's right. You're God's favorite kid, and he's taking care of you. I want everybody in, that can hear my voice today to know that you have no lack. That's right. You just have to believe Jesus. Don't believe. See, that's where we make a mistake. We believe there's no lack. Don't believe there's no lack. Believe that, that there's abundance. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Believe Jesus. Just believe Jesus. That's all you need. Nothing else. Believe Jesus. He'll get you through. Amen? Amen. So right now, I want to make sure that everybody knows that they know that they know that Jesus is their Lord. Because he's a God of choice. He gave you a choice to choose him as Lord or not. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. What a scripture. And guess what? I'm a whosoever. Yep. Aren't you? I'm a whosoever. And I believe that whosoever's are everywhere. And all you got to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died on the cross. God raised him from the dead. You make him the Lord of your life. So pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, believe I believe that you died for me, that you became my sin, that you buried my sin, and you resurrected me with you. Thank you, Lord. I trust today that you're the Lord of my life and that it's only forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We bless you all. We had a ball. Come see us on Tuesday or on Monday night at 7 p.m., Tuesday morning at 9 um, and all week long. We'll uh, see you guys on Facebook and on YouTube and Vimeo. And thank you all. We had a ball. Amen.